Hi guys, welcome to the TOEFL speaking test. Stay tuned till the end of this video because we have some sample answers that will help you improve your answers. In the next videos, we will talk about these answers in more detail and talk about what makes them good, but also what mistakes the speakers made and what you can learn from those mistakes. Now, get ready to take the TOEFL speaking mock test. Question 1. In this question, you will be asked to give your opinion about a familiar topic. After you hear the question, you will have 15 seconds to prepare your response and 45 seconds to speak. Do you think that eating healthy food is easier or more difficult today than it was 40 or 50 years ago? Use examples and details to support your answer. Please prepare your answer after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep. Question 2. In this question, you will read a short passage about a campus situation and then listen to a talk on the same topic. You will then answer a question using information from both the reading passage and the talk. After the question, you will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. Read a student letter in the campus newspaper. You will have 50 seconds to read the letter. Begin reading now. Now listen to two students discussing the letter. Hey, did you read that letter? What do you think? Yeah, I read it. I understand what she's saying, but I really don't agree with her suggestions. How come? Well, students often need to borrow the bikes for longer periods of time, sometimes a whole day. What for? Well, I like to do stuff off campus. For instance, my friends and I, on the weekends, sometimes we like to ride bikes to the state park outside of town and do some hiking there and it basically takes the whole day. It's nighttime by the time we get back. So if you had less time, you wouldn't be able to do that. Right, and also her other suggestion doesn't seem practical to me. The card thing? Yeah, that's not gonna work. What if you wanna enter a campus building? Even though you can get into most of the classroom buildings without a card, there are certain buildings on campus where you need to show your card to get in, like the library and dining hall. Yeah, that's true. So students wouldn't be able to go to any of those places till they got their cards back. The man expresses his opinion about the proposal described in the letter. Briefly summarize the proposal, then state his opinion about the proposal, and explain the reasons he gives for holding that opinion. Please prepare your answer after the beep.
Please begin speaking after the beep. Question 3. In this question, you will read a short passage on an academic subject and then listen to a talk on the same topic. You will then answer a question using information from both the reading passage and the talk. After the question, you will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. Read a passage from a biology textbook. You will have 50 seconds to read the passage. Begin reading now. Now, listen to part of a lecture in a biology class. Okay, so let's talk about what happened to a certain type of insect, a moth, a red and black moth that lives in Europe. These moths eat a plant called ragwort, and they live in fields where the ragwort plants grow. Now, there was a group of moths that lived in one of these fields, and for many years there was a lot of ragwort growing there. So the moths had plenty to eat, and the total number of moths in the field stayed pretty much the same. But then one year, it rained a lot less than usual, and the ragwort didn't grow as well. The result was that the moths didn't get enough to eat, and many didn't survive. But even the ones that did survive didn't lay as many eggs as before. So that year, the moth population in the field was quite a bit smaller. The next year, though, the amount of rainfall returned to normal again. Many more ragwort plants grew, and once again, there was a lot available for the moths to eat. So that year, the moth population increased, and the female moths laid many more eggs than the year before. And now, after all that rainfall and plant growth, there were just as many moths in the ragwort field as there were before. Explain the concept of carrying capacity using the example of the moths and ragwort. Please prepare your answer after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep.
Question 4. In this question, you will listen to a short lecture. You will then be asked to summarize important information from the lecture. After you hear the question, you will have 20 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds. Listen to part of a talk in a business class. Okay, so last time we were talking about the process of starting up a business on your own and how new business owners often encounter a lot of obstacles. But one way to get an easier start is through franchising. That's when there's already a well-known established company and you open up a new branch of that company in a new location. Your new business will be a part of the larger established company with the same name and it'll be run just like the other branches of that company. Let's discuss some advantages of franchising. Now, one great advantage of franchising is that the company provides training to you and all of your employees. They teach you about all the aspects of the business and you're given a plan to follow for success. So you don't have to do the training yourself or come up with your own business plan. For example, if you're opening a new division of a restaurant that sells pizza, say, somebody from the company will come to the restaurant that you're opening and they'll train you and your employees in how to prepare the pizzas, how to take food orders, plus everything about how to operate the restaurant so it will be run exactly like all the other restaurants in the company. Another advantage of franchising is the established customer base. Because your business will have the same name as the company that's already well known, it'll already have a loyal customer following. So when you open a new division, people will want to come because they'll be confident of its quality. So again, let's say you're opening a new restaurant, a pizza place. The restaurant is already well known because it has such good pizza. So when you open your own restaurant with the same name in a new location, people know your pizza is going to be really good too. They'll go to your restaurant because they already trust that they'll have a good experience there. Using the professor's example of the pizza restaurant, explain two advantages of franchising. Please prepare your answer after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep. I think it's more difficult to eat healthy food than it was 40 or 50 years ago. There are two reasons for my answer. Firstly, with the development of junk food, more people eat junk food because it's tasty and cheap. While there are many ways to eat healthy, with all the junk food there is and how cheap it is, it can be hard to have a healthy eating routine. Secondly, it takes time and dedication to develop a healthy diet. A lot of people would rather resort to easily accessible food such as instant noodles. The time and dedication it takes to actively eat healthy food and have a healthy diet can be very difficult for some people. Yeah, I think it was easier to eat healthy food back in the day compared to now. Well, uh, first of all, people in this generation are exposed to different and healthy snacks just like uh, junk food, oily foods, fast food, and sweets. And these snacks weren't even present back in the day. 
positive to food they ate 40 years ago were healthy and also great for the body. Secondly, it is really hard to find fresh foods nowadays. Unlike before, where you can just get food from the trees, like fruits, or you could just plant whatever kind of food that you would like to eat. Unfortunately, today, the trees have turned into buildings and the places where we want to plant have become roads. The proposal suggests that the hours of bike borrowing program should be limited to four hours, so more students get a chance to borrow bikes. Also, instead of leaving cash as a deposit, she suggests leaving student ID instead, so students don't need to remember to carry cash. The man disagrees because sometimes he and his friend would like to borrow the bikes to go on hikes that are out of town. This could easily take them the whole day, sometimes returning at night, so four hours is too short. He disagreed with the second suggestion because although a lot of buildings on campus don't need a student ID, some do uh, need a student ID to get in. So leaving the student ID as a deposit is not practical. In the reading passage, it states that two changes must be made in order to make the bicycle borrowing program better. The first one is to actually have a short new time when the students borrow the bicycles. And the second one is to just leave their identification card instead of their cash. The man doesn't seem to agree with this idea written on the letter, and he has two reasons for it. To begin with, his first reason was that most of the students actually use the bike for a longer amount of time. And a great example would be when students use it off campus to go hiking or go somewhere with friends on the weekends, which could probably take a whole day. Secondly, he states that the card system is really not the best option since some campus buildings would require a card in order to get in such as dining halls and libraries. And if they don't have the card with them, it will be pretty hard to go inside. The carrying capacity is the greatest number a habitat can support a certain species. An animal species needs water and food to survive in a given environment. However, resources are limited and something might happen to disrupt the relationship between the animal and habitats. The carrying capacity may change. For example, the red and black moth eats a plant called ragwort. This moth lives in an area where there are lots of uh, ragwort, so the number of species stays stable. However, one year the amount of rainfall drops. So there are not as many ragwort available and hence the number of moths lessen. The following year, the rainfall returned to its normal level and the number of moths grew back to its original population. From the reading passage, it is stated that the greatest number a habitat can support is called the, uh, the carrying capacity. The carrying capacity can either be stable or it can be changed, depending on the resources available. In a biology class, a professor shared an example of the so-called carrying capacity about a specific red and black moth that is located in Europe. A plant named ragwort also lives in the area where these moths are located. These plants were the moth's source of food for many years since there were more than enough supply of ragworts. Unfortunately, in one year, it didn't rain a lot in that place, making the ragwort not grow well. This situation made the moths decrease since they didn't have anything to eat. However, fortunately, in the next year, the plant has grown again, making the moths increase in capacity just like before. In the lecture, the professor explains two advantages of franchising. Firstly, if you buy the franchise, there are already systems in place to run the business. So even if you don't have a business plan or doesn't know how to train your staff to or run your business, the franchise will send someone to train you and your staff. They will also give advice on how to run the business. Secondly, with franchising, Let's say you open a pizza shop. The franchise has already got a good customer following. 
and people know that the food is good, and they will have a positive experience. So when you open a new shop, people will come because they know the pizza will be good because of the franchise. In a business class, the professor says that new business owners usually experience obstacles when having a business on their own. So she discussed about how franchising can help them. She states that there are two advantages of franchising. First advantage that she mentioned is how you don't have to provide your own training, since the large company does all the training instead. An example she mentions is like having a pizza restaurant. Since if it is your own business, you have to do everything starting from the ingredients up to the training. But since it is franchising, someone will be there to assist you and your employees. The second advantage is how there's already a large establishment of customers. Since it is a well-known company, people are already loyal from buying their products. For instance, if you open up a pizza restaurant that is already known, a lot of customers will come visit it because they already know that it tastes good. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video. Share your thoughts in the comments section and check back for new videos.